Hey everyone, and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards, and this is a recipe demo of fall sangria with homemade apple cider in a slow cooker, AKA white girl hooch. That's kind of what I want to call it. It's a gorgeous cocktail that makes your home smell absolutely delicious. If you're hosting family during the holiday season, make this towards the end of their stay. It'll warm up the home and make everyone feel so cozy and huggy, and then spike it with wine and whiskey for when they leave. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and let's get right to it. The homemade apple cider recipe comes from tasty.com, and it obviously starts with apples. Four gala apples and four Granny Smith apples, which are the green ones, and they're more tart than your red varieties. Since we're cooking them whole, we wanna make sure we've scrubbed off any wax if you bought them from the grocery store. Now I soaked mine in boiling water and dish soap, and then used my vegetable brush to just scrub. Now, if you bought them from a farmer's market, um, just a you know good scrub to get the dirt off is fine. Boiling them did change the color of the skin weirdly, but the inside of the apple is just fine. And we need to slice up the apples. We also need one orange, also sliced into wedges. Place all the fruit in your slow cooker and add the aromatics. The tasty recipe called for one and a half tablespoons of whole allspice which you may not like keep around in your kitchen um, or it might not be easy to find wherever you are. So I used mulling spices instead. So about one and a half tablespoons of whole peppercorns, one and a half tablespoons of whole cloves, which is original to the Tasty Recipe, three cinnamon sticks also from the Tasty Recipe. So I adapted by using one stick and then about two tablespoons of another type of cinnamon for some extra depth. And a few cardamom pods because I can't control myself. Now we cook it on high for three to four hours. You'll notice there's no sugar, and that's why I like this recipe. I think the orange helps, but also you may wanna consider four to five dates to cook with it all. I use dates in my mulled wine, and it works really well. After three to four hours, carefully mash up all your fruit with a potato masher, and cook for one to two more hours. This is when it starts to smell very, very good. I wish there was something to do with all the mashed up apple because now we strain out all of the solids. I have a strainer lined with cheesecloth over a large pot to catch the juice. This is mostly a gravity thing, so give yourself plenty of time to just let it slowly do its thing. You can encourage it along by gently stirring up the solids to help the liquid find its way down, but be careful not to like disturb the cheesecloth. After some time when the mixture has cooled, Gather all the corners of the cheesecloth and twist, pushing out even more liquid. If you can let this set overnight, I think it'll get you the most juice with the least amount of effort. And you can add all the juice back into the slow cooker and keep it warm and serve it directly like that. Or you can spice up this puppy. I found this fall sangria recipe on TikTok and it's really pretty. We need some sliced up fruit like apples, oranges, and pears for aesthetic and for garnish. For three quarters of a cup of apple cider, you'll do a couple tablespoons of whiskey, rum, or brandy, and half a bottle of wine. Mix it all up and watch the world spin. It tastes a lot like mulled wine because of the spices I used, but it kicks a lot harder. The TikTok recipe also added brown sugar, but I had the dates in the cider and I don't like drinks that are too sweet, so I left that part out. That is it for this dual recipe of homemade apple cider and fall sangria. Get the ingredient list below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash fall sangria. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.